Hey, this is Josh with Spot Hog Archery Products. We're at No Limits Archery in Denver, Colorado. I'm here with Santino. And we're gonna go through a process. I'm gonna show them uh, a little old trick of the trade from my, my competition years. This is something that not everybody necessarily knows about, but it does affect your results on how you're shooting. It can affect your hunting, it affects your target shooting, it affects your practice. So it's a good thing to know. And there is adjustments you can do to get it so it's better, but those are some pretty high-end processes. And I think in this video, what we just wanna talk about is just being aware that this yeah. is happening. So back in the day, when bows had not such harsh cams and you draw back to your full draw, you had your valley. And back in those days, your valley could be as much as a half inch, five eighths of an inch. I even had one that was a three quarter inch. So all the way from the back of the wall to the front, you had this big, you know, gap in there to work with. Well, what happens is if you're at the back of the wall and you're aiming dead center in the middle of the spot and you fire off that shot, or you draw back to the back of the wall and you creep down to the front of the wall right before it jerks you over and you aim in dead center in the spot and you fire off the shot, you'll get two different points of impact. Typically, the short shot, the front of the wall is going to be higher and the long draw is going to be lower. So not only will you get a potential vertical different point of impact, but you'll also find that you get a left and right different point of impact, depending on whether you're at the front of the wall or the back of the valley. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through this process. So I want you to draw your bow back. We're at 40 yards right now and we're going to fire down here at this target and we are going to draw back to the back of the wall, hard against the wall and make sure you're hard into it and try to get a good shot. Okay. Hard into the wall. Hard into the wall on this one. Feel pretty good? Yeah. Okay. Now we're gonna load up another arrow. This time we're gonna draw hard against the wall and I want you to intentionally come down on the front. Without it jerking you over, you need to be as close as you can to the front of your valley. Got it. Same thing, same distance, same spot, and a good shot. Okay. So what we see here is we have the height actually isn't, this one's a little bit higher than that one, but there's also a left and right difference here. Now that could be the bow itself showing that, or that could be uh, you with making not necessarily an optimum shot. So this is one of those things where we're gonna, you wanna do it multiple times because you need some form of consistency. If you had a hooter shooter, you could just cheat and <laughs> know for sure on the first go whether it was good or not. We all have good days and bad days when we're shooting. I mean, there's some days where I can't miss and there's some days where I should probably sell my bow and go bowling. But hey, so on it, you don't do this type of stuff on a day where you're having a rough day. This is one of those days where you're feeling kind of good. You don't really have it like, you don't need to sight in. You don't, you're just out shooting just to shoot. And man, you're just on fire. That's the day that you want to do this type of a test. So we're going through the process today, but I would strongly recommend, just like how we talked about revisiting your third axis from time to time, to also revisit this and just check and see, you know, once a month, just kind of double check and see where things are at. But we're going to go ahead and shoot again. We're going to do it again now. So we already shot the first time. But now we should be able, if it was, we should see repeat, repeatable results on the second time that were very similar to our first time, or maybe they're just not good shots. Okay. So. First time hard. Yep, first time back against the wall on the low left target. Or center target, right? Whichever one you want. Yeah, center target. Okay. Okay. And now we're gonna do a short shot. And kind of the best way to do that is to come hard against the wall and then intentionally just kind of relax. That's what I was trying. You won't know how far you're creeping forward because you don't want to get the jerk over, but that's how I always get to the short is just come hard against the wall and then relax. And usually you'll suck up just a little bit for your short. Okay. Okay, so in this particular instance, what we're seeing is we get, you're not getting an up and down difference. You clearly both, both rounds, you've got a left and right difference that's occurring, which that is, that happens with this process is that sometimes it's up and down, sometimes it's left and right, sometimes it's both. So what we're looking at is two times in a row now, we're not getting a big height difference in variation, but we're getting a pretty blatant left and right difference on both rounds. So what that means is if you sight in all your pins and you're, everything's good to great, you know, you're doing great, you know, all of a sudden you start finding like at the end of the day, all of a sudden you're shooting a little bit more to the side 
Well, maybe you're tired, you shot a lot of arrows. Maybe you're shooting off the front of your wall now, not necessarily the back of your wall. And so the next shot, what you should do is pull back and make sure you're hard against the wall again. And rather than move your sight, instead of chasing your arrow, check and see, was I being lazy and creeping forward and instead pull hard in your wall. And if all of a sudden you find, boom, you're back in line again, well, you know exactly why. Right. Is because varying that draw length was messing with your point of impact a little bit. So I've had that same issue where I one time went out to go sight in my, my bow and I was sighted. I started it. Uh, I always ran 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, where the wire meets the bubble was 80. I started with 80, moving the whole pin guard up. And of course, when you're doing your, that, you move the whole pin guard. I'm shooting for like an hour at 80 yards, you know, getting it just right. Then I moved to my 70 and then I moved to my 60 and I got to my 40 or my 50, 40 and 30. And when I came back the next day, what I found out was, is I was either sighted in at 80, 70, and 60, or I was sighted in at 50, 40, 30, because the 50, 40, and 30, I was tired. And I sighted those all in at the front of my draw. Right. And I sighted in all the long ones at the back of my draw. And so I had to pick which one am I gonna go with? Am I gonna go with the back against the wall? So I had to redo my, my 50, 40, 30. It's only totally makes sense. But my point is, is every bow does this, and, and you as a consumer, just because his bow is doing this left and right, mine might be up and down, but it's good to know so that when you're in the field and something's happening to be able to quickly diagnose and figure out what's wrong, like, is it my equipment or is it me? These are little tools that'll help you kind of get to the bottom a little quicker about what's, what's actually going on. For sure. But anyways, that's short and long and, and everybody should, should spend some time with their equipment doing this. You should know if I vary my draw length, what is my punishment for it? Is it nothing? Is it up and down? Is it left and right? There's going to be a punishment for it. And how big is that punishment? Right. So, well, thank you. Yep. Absolutely, man. All right.